Hi. Uh, good morning. My name is Greg Martin, and I work with the Psychics Learning Curriculum Development Team. And this morning, we're going to look at Virtual Data Lab. And Virtual Data Lab is a software package that is a simulation software that allows students to be able to conduct experiments using simulated real-world hardware that would typically be found in the science lab. Uh, the Virtual Data Lab can be used for lots of different things. We can use it for um, acceleration, force and velocity, uh, different types of biology experiments. But the one we're going to focus on today is on photosynthesis. And um, so we're going to look at the curriculum. And in grade 7 is one of the first times that the students actually start using the Virtual Data Lab. Uh, and they're going to use it for photosynthesis. So if you look at grade 7, <coughs> The software virtual data lab is going to be used, as I said earlier, in different activities. But the first one, and probably the first one you'd want to use with students, is in the scientific method area. There's one down here, Implement an Experimental Investigation. And the reason why you'd want to use this one first is because when you use this particular investigation, we um, focus in and really show the students much more precisely step-by-step step, what we want them to do. And then later on we have them use the same software, but we don't give them as much instruction so they can start applying the things they've learned in earlier activities. So in this particular activity, the students are looking at why do flowers grow at certain times of year better than others, and they're trying to figure out an experiment that might help them understand why that is. And what we're wanting to happen in the experiment is for students to identify that in the summertime, there's more light during the day, so therefore more photosynthesis takes place in the plants, and therefore they typically grow better uh, in that time of year. Um, but what we're going to do is, is we're going to use a, the fo a virtual data lab in order to actually do an experiment where we can try to prove the idea that light does affect, uh, the amount of light that's shown on a plant does affect the amount of photosynthesis that takes place. So in the experiment, over to the right here is a picture of the virtual data lab software that they're going to be using. And down here, there's actually a step-by-step -step procedure that they would want to look at first. So if we click on the uh, procedure sheet, it's going to come up and show um, what typically would be the instructions that they would need to follow. First of all, we give them a picture over to the right here of what their lab is going to look like once it's set up properly. And if you look at it, it basically is a flask, and inside the flask there is a, uh, a pond weed that we're going to use. And we're going to shine light on that pond weed, and of course the pond weed will then start carrying on photosynthesis. As it does that, one of the things that it gives off as a byproduct is oxygen. So as the oxygen is released from the plant, it's going to float up our flask, and as it does so, we can actually count the number of bubbles, and we can see how many bubbles are being produced depending on the amount of light that's being shown on our, on our weed. <clears throat> so in the experiment, it tells them basically to connect the equipment as shown. So they look at what well, over here, and they start taking their steps from that. It says then connect a high-level light sensor in a bubble counter to the data logger, bring out a stopwatch, place the pond weed in the flask, uh, using the measure, set a distance of 0 0.05 meters from the center of the pond weed to the end of the lamp. So these are the step-by-step -step instructions that the students would follow. Now they could print them out by clicking on the print button or either they can just look at it electronically. And we're going to close that out of our way and we're actually going to open the photosynthesis software, which is called Virtual Data Lab. Uh, when it first comes up, the Virtual Data Lab it has what we call heads-up displays, and that, are, and that is these boxes that show up here that show various pieces of hardware that we have access to to help us conduct an experiment. Now, if you grab those, those can be grabbed and hold your mouse down, and you can move those around the screen, and they can be moved anywhere where you need them to be. Now, if you'll notice as I move them, if I'm moving it, oh, like, for example, the data logger here, as I move it just to the left of there's a yellow bar, and that's basically showing me where that data logger is in reference to the screen. Now, it, the reason why it does that is because if I hide this, and we, and we call that process called docking, if we dock this by clicking on this button here, it actually moves it out of our way so it clears up the space on the screen. 
but by doing so we need to have access to it so it shows us where it is over here by this little yellow box here so if I move my mouse near it it says data log and I can bring that back on the screen now all the things we're going to show you today all that information is can be accessed by clicking on the help and the user guide and in the user guide it actually gives you information on uh, everything you need to know about the virtual data lab for example we talked about the heads up display and it talks about that here and talks about how you can dock them and move them around in the yellow area here that we talked about as we move it it identifies where it was there's uh, information on data logging itself there's information on the uh, equipment and how you can use the equipment and placing it on the screen and doing all the things you need to learn how to do so that help is always available to the students um, first of all let's talk about these these heads up displays like I said they can be docked by just clicking and moving them out of the way and that's so that we have a much cleaner area to work on I can always go back and bring those on the screen anytime by just clicking on them um, other areas on the screen that we need to identify right off the bat is that we have a cupboard here that holds some of the hardware that we're going to be using we have a retort stand if we move our mouse over those objects they tell us what they are like the clamp and the rod and the flask with water and um, <clears throat> the, the lamp and, and the uh, different types of weeds that are found inside here um, it really doesn't matter which weed we use it does tell us to use one of these two right here in the instructions and it doesn't matter which one it's up to the students to do that and that way different students can get different readings but the concept is the more light we shine on a plant the more photosynthesis is typically going to take place and so that's what we're trying to prove to the students so what we're going to do is we're going to set up our experiment like our um, information sheet that we looked at earlier so we're going to move this out this right here by the way is called our blackboard and it's just somewhere where we can make sketches uh, to give students additional information it's never going to be exactly like the experiment because we don't want to give them all the answers. We just want to give them kind of a rough sketch of is if you were planning this experiment, kind of how would you lay it out to get an idea of running the experiment. And we can grab that handle here and move that completely up out of our way. If we refer back to our uh, information sheet that we looked at earlier, it says we need to set up our retort stand. Now, the virtual data lab is truly a, a fully interactive software. What I mean by that is if I take this retort stand anywhere and let go of it, it's going to fall down until it hits the top, the countertop here. So if I can move it around anywhere I move it, I can move it around, and it's fully interactive. So the software won't tell kids you've done this in the wrong place. It allows them to be very free format so they can truly get an, uh, a real-world experience of using hardware. We also have a light switch here where we can turn the light on and off in the in the room. We have a lamp. We've got to bring that down on our countertop. We're going to look at our picture. It said to bring down the clamp. You'll notice as I move my mouth, my clamp close to my retort stand, the retort stand lights up. That means if I let go over there, it's going to attach to that stand. If I were to hold it out here where it's not close, it's just going to fall to the tabletop. So I've got to make sure that my retort stand lights up. Now, I'm not worried about the height right now because I can move that later. I'm going to bring the flask over and put it on there. You notice it didn't light up, so therefore it falls. Luckily, in a virtual world, glass doesn't break. So we're going to bring it up here. and We're going to uh, highlight our uh, clamp, and then that will hold our there. We're going to go get one of the two clamps. It really doesn't matter. We'll try this one this time. Um, and then we're going to bring down our rod and place it somewhere down here. The other thing it says we need is uh, sensors, and it tells us we're going to use two of those. And the sensors are in this box here. Uh, you have light sensors, which basically measure the amount of light that's found. You have a magnetic field sensor that can measure magnetic fields. You've got a bubble counter that can actually count bubbles as they pass between the opening and the, and the counter. Uh, you have an oxygen sensor that will give you the amount, the amount of oxygen in, in the air or in a, in a substance. So in this case, we're going to use, it says, a high-level uh, light sensor. So we're going to bring that down on the thing. If I want to, I can just lay it down here on the base. I can put it inside my clamp. It doesn't matter to the software. Um, but in the picture, it's kind of like, you know, it kind of shows it being in the clamp. So we'll put it there. It doesn't really matter. But really, we're going to refer back to our picture that's in the instructions, not necessarily this uh, Blackboard sample drawing. The next thing is we're going to bring down our counter. And we're going to connect that there. <clears throat> now the counter has a reset button on the side. Uh, that's going to be important. We're going to show you how to use that in a minute. But that allows me to reset the 
the counter back to zero so that we can run multiple experiments without having to disconnect and reconnect our hardware each time. So the next thing we're going to need is we're going to need our uh, meter, our data logger, and that's called the V-log. So if we click on that, that brings that up. At that point, we're here and we're ready to connect up our sensors to our uh, data logger. In order to do that, you just move your mouse over your sensor. You'll notice little crosshairs pop up. I can click on those and drag and connect those up to my data logger. Now it doesn't matter which one of these connections you use. I could have connected the, the Lux uh, highlight sensor to number two and vice versa. But if it was a specific one that it needed to be connected to in the instructions we would have told the students. Now you'll notice that number one is connected to our light sensor. It, it, uh, it measures in, a, in a, a variable called Lux and Lux is a measurement of the amount of light and uh, it's actually lumens is what we're uh, measuring. And right now it says 33, and that's just the measurement of light that it's picking up from the, the area that it's in. Now, if I turn my light off, then that's going to drop down to 5 lux because there's a much less light being shown on, on, the, on the sensor here. Now, you'll notice there is a little bit of ambient light, and we do that so that students still can see what they're trying to do. We don't want them to be completely in the dark about what's going on. So we're going to turn the light back on real quick. So we've got 33 lux, zero bubbles. That means there's no bubbles being released here. What's going to happen is as we shine our light on that uh, weed there, it's going to start a photosynthesis process, and it's going to start releasing oxygen. And as those bubbles rise to the top of our flask, we're going to be able to count each one as they go by the sensor. Uh, we're nearly ready to start here. However, it did tell us to set this a certain measurement here in our instructions, and it was 0 0.05 meters. So we have some tools over here and one of them is the measurement tool. So I can click on that. I can click on my measuring tool and you'll notice that I can move this around and if I grab my uh, helper move it a little bit out of the way, uh, we have two pointers here. So as I grab one, I can move that wherever I want it. Now you'll notice that I'm able to move this up and down, right and left, and it's basically giving me the measurement between these two points here. However, I want to measure horizontally from the center of the flask to the front of the bulb. So I want to use uh, what's my call my horizontal snap, and that allows it to snap this way so I don't have to worry about up and down. All i got to do is worry about left and right. So I'm going to get it virtually in the center of our flask, and then I'm going to bring this over till it's 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.05 meters like the instructions tells us. At that point, I'm going to grab my lamp, slide it over here. I'm going to grab my flask and move it down so it's more in the center of my light. Uh, and then I'm pretty ready, ready to go. I'm going to move my measuring device out of the way. There's some other tools here, like there's a stopwatch, which we're going to need in order to do time our event. There's also a, um, a zoom toolbar, which allows me to zoom. So if I click on the zoom tool, I can actually click here and actually get a closer view of the different areas on my screen. Okay. So that just zooms in and out. Uh, so if I need to, I could also um, zoom over here anywhere on the screen. <clears throat> you also have a calculator, so later on as students need to use the calculator to do some uh, math uh, things, for example, if they're averaging or dividing, multiplying, they have access to the calculator. Uh, so now we're ready to start our experiment, and what it basically tells them, I'm going to move some of this stuff out of our way now so we see, uh, it basically told us that we were to... Um, turn on the lamp, and then run our stopwatch for 30 seconds so that we could then, uh, uh, during that time period, find out how many bubbles are going to uh, go past our sensor, and that will tell us the amount of photosynthesis that's taking place. So the first thing it tells us is turn off the light. It says then turn on the lamp, and then virtually at the same time turn on the stopwatch. So on, on, and we're going. So you'll notice what's happening now. Bubbles are being created as oxygen is being released from our plant with the light shining on it. The two things we need to find out here is, first of all, the amount of light hitting our sensor here is 3,748, and these are the bubbles being created. So as this is going up now, we're waiting for 30 seconds, and so we're going to get ready with our light switch here. I'm going to turn it off after 30 seconds, and then we will have the two pieces of information we need. All right, so we're going to stop right there. So for 2,378 lux, the amount of bubbles created over a 30-second period of time was 378 bubbles. 
So that's the first time we run our experiment. We're going to turn on the light here so we can see this a little better. And so now what we're going to have the kids do is it says for them to repeat that process for 10 more times by changing the distance each time by 0 0.05 measurements. So basically what we would then do is bring our measurement tool back out, um, go get our thing, turn it on horizontal. Uh, we're going to move back to the center of our flask. And now we were at 0 0.5, so now we're going to go to 0 0.1. So we move that back, and we would run it again. Before we run it, of course, we need to zero out our bubble, so we're starting over. So we mesh our red reset counter. It's back to zero. Then we would turn off the light, start the lamp. We re rewind our stopwatch, hit start, time it for 30 seconds, and we get a different amount of bubbles for a different amount of, of light. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fast forward real quickly uh, it's out here. So each time they're adding 0 0.05. So the next one would be at 0 0.15, then at 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.3, so on and so forth. And the last one basically they're going to run is way out here at half a meter. So it's 0 0.5. So we're going to move our lamp in, get rid of our this tool, move that out of our way. We've already reset our bubbles. And this would be the last one we were going to run. So we would turn off our light, turn on our light. And you'll notice now we have much more, less amount of light hitting the sensor. It's only 343 lux. So much less light because of the distance. Um, and you'll also notice the bubbles are much uh, less being created over, um, over time. So we're going to wait for our 30 seconds. So we're at 23, 4, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. So we're going to stop that. So now we've only created 192 bubbles. So what we want students to see is, is as the light decreases, as the distance gets further between our light source and our, and our pond weed, then less photosynthesis is taking place and less bubbles are going to be released as the oxygen rises to the surface. And that's just a simple example of using the hardware in the virtual data lab to simulate what would happen in a real classroom environment. I hope you've enjoyed this, and we'll be doing more. Thank you.